Hello, hi everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera. So now we meet again for our final topic in the subject of computational analysis method for engineers. So our topic would be finite element method. The learning outcome for this topic, um, which is finite element method, at the end of this topic, you should be able to understand what the finite element method is and how to use it to solve problems, especially civil engineering problems. So we will begin with the brief introduction to the finite element method. A finite element can be visualized as a small portion of continuum like a solid or a structure. So the word finite here distinguish such a portion from the infinitesimal elements um, of differential calculus. So the geometry of the continuum is formed by the assembly of a collection of non-overlapping domains with simple geometry termed as finite elements. So it consists of, um, these elements actually consists of triangles and quadrilaterals uh, for two dimensions and tetrahedra or hexahedra in three dimensions. So it usually said that a mesh of a finite elements discretize the continuum. So we can see this um, mesh uh, from the figure after this. Okay, as we can see here is the uh, the figure for the example of discretization or mesh of different solids and structures with finite elements. So here we have uh, a building structures, key, a machine block, or even a human heart. So now we will look at the example of the finite element software. So the development of this software is uh, consists of both commercial and research oriented. The commercial software is typically marketed by private companies and accompanied by appropriate graphical user interfaces (GUI) so make, uh, to make the simulation more easier. And then we have here the first software, commercial software is Nastran, which stemmed from an effort of NASA to create a computer code for analysis of uh, aerospace structure. That is Nastran. And then um, the second one, uh, the another uh, popular program is ANSYS, which was also one of the first program to allow non-linear analysis. And then um, from the same um, family company, they have sub-2000 ETAPS and perform 3D. Then we also have Adina. Um, the two popular commercial programs with industry are Abacus and LS Dyna. This is um, very popular among uh, researchers and companies. So both of these programs have a very wide range of capabilities, including non-linear analysis of um, solids and structures. So these two are very popular nowadays. Besides commercial software, there are several research groups that have contributed to the open source finite element codes. So these codes or this uh, program is primarily aimed for researchers and educators. The two uh, interesting and popular open source programs are FIP and OpenSys. So many uh, researchers use these two software in their research study. And then we are also uh, having an available free uh, finite element software uh, nowadays. The example are Lisa, then we have Makeway, 
free FEM, and many others. Next, let us look at the, the use of FEM analysis in structural modeling. So basically, there are four general steps in solving problem using finite element method analysis. The first one is classification of the problem, and then conceptual, structural, and computational models, um, structural analysis by the FEM, and the verification and validation of the FEM results. Okay, for the first step, which is classification of the problem, uh, in order to analyze a structure, we must ask ourselves with the following questions. Like, which are the more relevant physical phenomena that influencing the structure? And then, is the problem aesthetic or dynamic in nature? Are the kinematics or material properties linear or nonlinear? Which are the key results requested? And what is the level of accuracy sought? So the answers to these questions are essential um, to determine a structural model and an adequate computational method. For the second step, um, is the development of conceptual models and definition of structural and computational models. So, computational model like FEM is applied to conceptual models of a real problem. So, we're not going to analyze or, um, or build a model from a real problem, but we will simulate the conceptual models. Okay, for example here, from figure 13, we have an actual problem, which is a flat slab that failed uh, because of the punching shear failure. So, from this problem, um, the conceptual model will be developed only on a part of the actual problem. Okay, so this conceptual model that will be analyzed using finite element uh, method analysis. Okay, um, a conceptual model can be developed once the physical nature of a problem is clearly understood. So, um, this is by excluding all the superfluous details and including all the relevant features of the problem so that the model can be described with re reality with enough accuracy. Then the next one is definition of the structural models. This sometimes called as mathematical models. Okay, So a structural model must include three fundamental aspects. The first one is the geometric description. Uh, this includes points, lines, surface, and volumes. And then the second one is the mathematical expression um, of the basic law. Okay, uh, for example, the force equilibrium equations or the boundary conditions and so on. And the third one is the specification of properties of the materials and the loads that acting on the structure. Okay, the same conceptual models uh, of a structure can be analyzed using different type of structural models, depending on the accuracy and the, simpl the simplicity sought in the analysis. So, for an example, uh, a beam can be modeled using uh, the general 3D analysis theory or 2D plane stress 
theory. Uh, also, the simpler beam theory. So, each of these structure models will provide a different setup of the analysis of the actual structure. So, as we can see from figure 13 here, uh, the general features of a typical member of each structural models family. Um, the structures that can be analyzed with these type of models include frames, buildings, slabs, foundations, retaining walls, dams, and etc. So, no, so here we have um, a solid element which is a 3D and two-dimensional solid. We also have a plate and shell element where thickness is far lesser than uh, the length and the breadth of the elements. And then we have beam, straight beam and curved beam. Beam is when the dimension of L is greater than the breadth and the thickness. And then we have an asymmetric solid element. And then the circular and asymmetric shell elements. The next step in the structure analysis is the definition of computational method or a numerical method. Um, so in our case, it's finite element method. Uh, it requires um, the implementation in a computer code. And we need to assign the model with the quantitative information on the mechanical properties of the materials, uh, boundary conditions, and also the applied loads. Okay, as well as the features of the discret discretization, which is element type, uh, mesh size, and etc. The outcome of this process is what we call as a computational model for the analysis of a structure as shown in figure 14. So the uh, figure 14 here is um, the development or the path from the real structure to the computational model. So we start with the real structure or an actual problem. Yeah, okay. And then um, from there, we develop the concept to a model of the structure, okay, which is uh, smaller in size. And, and then we define the structure model um, in the numerical uh, or mathematical analysis. So that when we uh, prepare for the code, and then we assign the physical parameters and discretization of parameters. And lastly is the output of the computational model. So the third step is the structure analysis by the finite element method. The geometry of a structure is discretized when it is split into a mesh of finite elements of a certain accuracy. So this process is also called as meshing. Uh, okay. So with respect to reality, we have therefore two errors um, from the outset, the modeling error and the discretization error. Figure 15 here shows uh, this, the discretization of some geometrical models of structures using finite elements. Or sometimes we, ca we call it as a meshing process. So we have 3D solid element uh, mesh and 2D solid element and the plate and shell elements, beam elements which is straight and arch beam, okay, and asymmetric solid elements, circular plate element and asymmetric shell elements. So these are the example of discretization of a um, structures. Uh, an example of the finite element method analysis of an office building can be seen here in figure 
it's an actual structure and discretization into shell and three-dimensional beam elements. This is actually um, an Akba tower in Barcelona. The final step is the verification and validation of the final element method results. So these steps um, are the primary methods for building and quantifying uh, a confidence in modeling and computational. Validation is the assessment of the accuracy of the structural and computational models by comparison of the numerical result with the experimental data. All right? While verification is the process of determining um, that the computational model accurately represents the underlying structural model and its solution. This can be done by comparing the numerical results with simple benchmark problem with exact solutions that can be obtained analytically. So from figure 1.7, we can see a scheme of the verification and validation steps. Okay, these are uh, obtained from American Society of Mechanical Engineering. So when we see here, um, figure 17, which is the scheme of the verification and validation of a uh, process in the final element method. So from the real structure, and then we develop the concept to a model of the structure. And from this concept, from this construct structure, we can analyze using numerical method or test using experimental um, analysis. Okay, so if we test or if we study the conceptual model using experimental uh, analysis, we need to have the physical model and then we have to uh, design the experiment and then um, conduct the experimentation. Okay, so when we get the experimental results, we have a quantitative, we can do a quantitative comparison. Okay, while if we want to analyze using numerical method, so we need to have a structural model. This consists of geometry, equations, and assigning materials, properties, and loads. And then we apply the computational model of uh, final element method and then do the calculation to simulate the results. Okay, so here from the structural model to the computational model is where the code verification. Okay, and then uh, from computational model to simulation result is the calculation for verification. Then after conducting the um, calculation simulation, we will obtain um, simulation results for the computational model and then these results can be validated with the experimental results. Then we can do the quantitative comparison. Okay, if the quantita quantitative comparison is acceptable, then our model can be used to make prediction. If not, we need to go back and revise appropriate model or experiment and um, repeat again the physical model and so on. Okay, from the figure just now, there are two fundamental parts of verification. The first one is the code, code verification. Uh, in order to establish confidence that the mathematical model and the solution algorithm is working correctly. Um, the most popular one is to compare code outputs with the analytical solutions. That is called code verification. And then the second one is the calculation verification. Is to aim to et establish confidence that the discrete solution of the mathematical model is accurate. So, in other words, estimating the error of the numerical solution due to discretization. Right. 
the subsequent validation step from the figure just now has the goal of assessing the predictive uh, predictive capability of the model. So is it is made by comparing the numerical results with the validation experiments performed on the physical models in laboratory. So if this comparison are satisfactory, the model is deemed validated for its intended use. So in conclusion, if the model uh, uh, passes the test in the verification and validation plan, then it can be used to make the desired prediction with confidence. Okay, the general approach of implement, implementation uh, of the final element method. Although the particular will vary, the implementation of final element approach usually follows a standard step-by-step step, step step procedure. So there are basically six uh, steps in the general approach for uh, FEM. And the following provides a brief uh, overview of each of these steps. Okay, the first one, the first step is the discretization. It involves dividing the solution domain into finite elements. Uh, this can be seen from figure 31.2 that provides an example of elements employed in one, two, and three dimensions. The points of intersection of the lines that make up these sides of elements are referred as nodes, and the sides themselves are called as nodal lines and planes. So now we look at um, figure 31.2. Is for the example of elements employed in one dimension. Okay, when we have a line element. And then uh, for two dimension, we have quadrilateral element, four sides. And also we have triangular elements that, we ha uh, that have three sides. And then we have uh, for three dimension, a uh, hexahedron element. Okay. Then the second step is the element equations. Okay. Um, uh, the step is to develop equation to approximate the solution for each element. This involves two steps. The first one is the um, choosing an appropriate function. And the second one is evaluating the coefficients so that the function approximates the solution in an optimal fashion. Okay, for the first um, function is, uh, sorry, for the first one is the choice of approximate functions. Because they are easy to manipulate mathematically, polynomials are often employed for this purpose. Okay, for one-dimensional case, the simplest alternative um, is the first-order polynomial or a straight line. For example, it, um, equation 31.1, which is function of u um, equal to a naught plus a1x, where ux is the dependent variable, a naught and a1 is the constant, and x is the independent variable. This function must uh, through the value of ux at the end points of the element x1 and x2. Therefore, we will get the equation u1 equal to a0 plus a1 x1 and u2 equal to a0 plus a1 x2. Okay, that equations uh, can be solved using Cramer rules for a0 and A1 here. This can be substituted into equation 31.1 and then after collection of terms can be written as U equal to N1 U1 plus N2 U2 where N1 is actually equal to um, X2 minus X divided by X2 minus X1 and n2 equal to x minus x1 divided by x2 minus x1. This uh, equation 
of 31.2 is called as approximation or shape function and a1 and 2 is called as interpolation function so these two are the interpolation function um the equation 31.2 is also uh, a Langrange first order interpolation polynomial. It provides a means to predict intermediate values that is to interpolate between given values of u1 and u2 at the nodes. So looking at the figure 31.3 shows the shape function along the corresponding interpolation functions. So A here is the um, a line element and then B is a linear approximation or shape function. Okay, B is the shape function and the corresponding interpolation functions are shown in figure C and D. Okay, uh, notice that the sum of these two um, Interpolation, uh, interpolation function is equal to 1. Okay, the derivative of equation 31.2 is this. du dx equal to dn1 over dx u1 plus dn2 uh, over dx u2. While uh, for equation 31.3, and 31.4, the derivative of n's can be calculated as this. Okay, dn1 over dx equal to negative 1 over x2 minus x1, while dn2 over dx equal to 1 uh, divided by x2 minus x1. Therefore, the derivative of u is this. Okay, after substituting all the values corresponding to the equation. In other words, it is divided, it is a divided difference representing the slope of the straight line connecting the nodes. This integral can be expressed as this. Okay, from x1 to x2. Uh, u dx equal to uh, integration of uh, x1 to x2 n1 u, u1 plus n2 u2 dx. Each term on the right hand side, okay, right hand side, is merely the integral of the right rectangular base x2 minus x1. That is uh, the integration of n u dx equal to half of x2 minus x1 u. The, thus, the entire integral is this. Okay? In other, word, in other words, it's actually a trapezoidal rule. And then the next step in uh, elements equation is obtaining an optimal fit of the function to the solutions. Okay, once the interpolation function is chosen, the equation governing the behavior of the element must be developed. Okay, several methods are available for this purpose. Uh, among the most common are the direct approach and the variational approach. So, for our uh, subject, we only will um, show you the direct approach. Okay. Um, instead of fitting functions to data, this method specifies relationship between the unknowns that satisfy the underlying PDE in optimal fashion. Mathematically, the result element equation will often consists of a set of a linear algebraic equations that can be expressed in method forms. Okay, um, note that in some cases, the equation can be nonlinear. However, for the elementary examples described herein, and for many practical problems, the systems are linear. 
the third general approach steps is the assembly. So after individual element uh, equations are derived, they must be linked together or assembled to, to characterize the unified behavior of the entire system. So the assembly process is governed by the concept of continuity. Okay, um, when all the individual versions of equation 31.9 are finally assembled, the entire system is expressed in a metric forms of k uh, in bracket u prime equal to f prime. Okay, the assembly uh, vector k here is the assemblage property matrix. And U prime and F prime column vectors for unknown and external forces that are marked with primes to denote that they are an assemblage of the vector U and F from the individual elements. Okay, the fourth steps in implementing final element method uh, for the general approach is boundary conditions. Okay. Um, the equation must be modified to account for the system's boundary conditions. So these adjustments results in k bar uh, multiplied by vector u bar equal to vector f prime bar. Where the observers uh, signify that the boundary conditions have been incorporated. Number five is the solution, which can be obtained with technique described previously, such as LU decomposition. So in many cases, the elements can be configured so that the resulting equations are bended. Thus, the highly efficient solution schemes available for such system can be employed. Okay, and then the last one is post-processing. Uh, upon obtaining a solution, it can be displayed in uh, tabular form or graphically uh, in addition to secondary variables that can be determined and displayed. Although the preceding steps are very general, they are common to most implementations of the final element approach. So in the following section, we will illustrate how they can apply to obtain a numerical result for a simple physical system. Next, we go for the um, FEM application in one dimension. So figure 31.4 here shows a system that can be modeled by a one-dimensional form of Poisson's equations, where d squared t over dx squared equal to negative fx. So this is an, uh, a temperature function where fx is a function defining a heat source along the road and where the ends of the road are held at fixed temperatures where tx equal to 0 is t1 and tx equal to l is t2. So we can see here from figure 31.4 when x equal to 0, okay, so there, this is where uh, t1 and x equal to L is um, T2. Uh, it's a long, thin road subjected to fixed boundary conditions and a continuous heat source along its axis. So the fine uh, and B here is the finite element representation consisting of four equal length elements. So we have four elements and five nodes. Okay, one, two, three, four, five nodes. So figure uh, 31.4b here is actually the discretization of the model or the meshing uh, of the model. Okay. Then the next one is the development of element equations. Uh, an individual element as shown in figure 31.6a here. So this is the individual element. The distribution of the temperature for the element can be represented by approximation, uh, approximation function of t equal to 
N1 T1 plus N2 T2. Okay. Um, figure 31.6B. Okay, the bottom figure here. Is the approximation function amounts to a linear interpolation between the two nodal temperatures. Which is uh, node 1 and node 2. Um, as noted in section 31.1, there are a variety approach for developing the element equation. First is direct approach. Okay, for the simple case where fx equal to 0. And because of its general applicability in engineering, we will devote most of the section to the method of weight, weighted residuals. Okay, first we see the direct approach. For the case of um, where function x equal to 0, a direct method can be employed to generate the element equations. Okay, the relationship between heat flux and temperature gradient can be represented by the Fourier's law. Okay, Q or the flux, heat flux equal to negative K prime, uh, K is the coefficient, multiplied by dt dx. Okay, um, then the heat flow into the element to node 1 can be represented by this, okay, Q1. And similarly for node 2, which is Q2. Alright. So if that can be simplified further by recognizing the Fourier's law, uh, can be used to coach the end fluxes themselves in terms of the temperature gradients at the boundaries. So that is, we will obtain this equation for Q1 and Q2, which then can be substituted into the element equations to give this equation of 31.14. Okay, so we have a, a, a metric forms for the equations from um, the direct approach. Alright, so the previous direct approach is um, having a great intuitive appeal. But in other contexts, it is often difficult or impossible to derive finite element equations directly. So that's why we will use more general mathematical techniques like the method of weighted uh, residuals. For that method, which is uh, the method of uh, residual, the method of weighted residuals, I will not go further or in details, but we will go straight to the final um, version, uh, to the final results. So we have uh, element stiffness matrix, and we have a boundary condition and an external effects in one uh, versions of the results. So this is only for one element. Okay, uh, let's say element 1 with uh, node 1 or x1 and node 2, x2. Okay, so, and then next we will um, see the example 31.2, the how to develop an element equation for a heated root. Okay, employ equation 31.26 here previously. To develop the element equations for a 10 cm rod with boundary conditions of T uh, x0 equal to 40 and T x equal to 10 uh, equal to 200 and a uniform heat source of Fx equal to 10. Employ four equal size elements of lengths. So basically we have uh, a heated rod. Okay. Here is the ends. Um, discretized into four elements. Okay. Uh, so, and each element is in the length of 2.5 cm. Okay. And the heat source term in the first row of 31.6. 31.26 can be evaluated by substituting the equation 31.3 and integrating to give 
this okay the integration of the first the first elements from 0 to 2.5 by using this equation okay the top one um, integrate uh, 10 multiplied by 2.5 minus x divided by 2.5 we will get 12.5 and then similarly for the second row of this, okay, integration will give us 12.5. Okay, this result with the other parameter values can be substituted into equation 21.26 to give the element equations, okay. And then the following procedure, sorry, I will um, erase all this. So for the following procedure is the assembly. Before the element equations are assembled, the global numbering scheme, scheme must be established to specify the system topology. Um, as in table 31.1, this defines the connectivity of the element mesh. So, uh, how is the uh, global numbering? Let's say we have a, a bar just now. Okay, discretize into four elements. So, just mean this is a node. Okay, we have four elements. Element 1, element 2 element 3 and element 4. So the global numbering is the number of nodes according to the whole system. Okay, So let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is the global numbering. And then we have also a local numbering for the nodes. For example, uh, for node number 1, Okay, note number one here. So the number is uh, the, the number of note is one and two for element number one. And then the uh, the second element, the second element here we also have its uh, own number of notes. So we have note number one and note number two for element number two the same also goes to element number three okay so for element number three we have its own number of node one and number of node two and lastly for the element number four um, we have node number one and node number two once the topology is specified, the element equation can be written for each element using the global coordinates. Okay, Then they can be added one at a time to assemble the total system matrix. Uh, the process is depicted in figure 31.7. Yeah. So we see first the, the system topology for the final element segmentation scheme. Okay, as I said before, we have four elements, one, two, three, four, and then each of element have their own number of nodes, uh, means a local number, and for the whole system, we have the global numbering for the nodes. Then we will assemble all the equations for the total systems. So that means this is... Um, uh, the equations for element 1, sorry, uh, note 1, note 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so this is the assembly, uh, the, the assembly of the equations for the tools, for the total systems. And then, um, Procedure number four is the boundary conditions. Notice that as the equations are assembled, the internal boundary conditions will cancel. Thus, the final result of F, 
uh, F matrix in figure 31.7E here. Okay, this one. Uh, has boundary condition for only the first and the last nodes. So we only have only conditions for the first and the last nodes. Um, because T1 and T5 are given these natural boundary conditions at the ends of bar of DTX1 over DX and DTX5 over DX represent unknowns. Therefore, the equations can be Re expressed as this equation 31.27. Okay. Okay. So, figure 31.8 here showing the results uh, of applying the finite element approach to a heated bar. The, the exact solution is also shown. Um, that we can see the black line is the exact solution and the blue line is the finite element solution. So we have four uh, elements. So it divided by four. Okay. And for the solution, the equation 31.27 can be solved for this um, temperature value. Okay, so we get um, T1 is 66, T2 173.75, T3 T4 253.75, and T5 negative 34. Okay, that is the solution. And then for the post-processing procedure, uh, the result can be displayed graphically. Okay, this is uh, from uh, figure 31.8 previously. This is the post-processing uh, results. Um, notice that the final element calculation captures the overall trend of the exact solution and in fact provides an exact match at the nodes. However, a discrepancy exists in the interior of each element due to the linear nature of the shape function. So this one is uh, because... The line is linear, so there, there is a bit different uh, for the internal elements. Okay. And for the last uh, subtopic in this chapter, which is a uh, two-dimensional problem, okay, um, the extension of the finite element approach to two dimensions is conceptually similar to the one-dimensional applications. So, thus, it will follow the same uh, steps as were outlined in the one-dimensional problem. So, I will just go through briefly for this two-dimensional problem. Okay, as previously, the first approach is discretization of the problem, which uh, we will divide the, 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 the system into... A number of mesh or discretize the system into a number of a uh, portion and then the second one is developing the element equations here okay you can go through uh, in details and then after developing the equations uh, the element equation okay uh, okay this is Figure 31.10 um, showing a linear approximation function for a triangular element corresponding to the interpolation functions which shown in B and D. So actually we have uh, a triangular element here. Okay. Um, the approach, uh, the next approach is boundary conditions and assembly. After we develop the elements equation. Uh, we apply the boundary conditions and assemble all the equations. Okay. See here, the figure 31.11 is the, the numbering scheme for the nodes and elements of a finite element uh, approximation of the heated plate. So before that, we uh, before this, we uh, discussed about a bar in one dimension. 
So, this one is the plate in two dimension. Okay. And figure 31.12 is the temperature distribution of the plate. So, we can see here is the, the temperature, the initial temperature is 0 and going to 100 at, one, at the other end of the plate. So, that is the solution and the pro post-processing of the finite element procedure in uh, two-dimensional problems. Okay, so I think that's all for this topic.